Hi and welcome again to this tutorial for beginners about 3D modeling in AutoCAD. In this part we will be exploring the commands Revolve, Slice, Solid Edit and some commands from the Modify panel. Let's go through it! Revolve With this tool it's possible to create a 3D object by extruding 2D objects around an axis. As it happens to the command extrude, if we select open objects like a line or a closed polyline, we obtain a surface. On the other hand, if we revolve closed objects, the result is a solid. I am going to show you how this command works. It looks like a bit tricky on the beginning. First, we have to find it on the same place where extrude and loft are located. Select the object to revolve. Press Enter. Then we have to define an axis where the polyline can rotate. It's going to be this line. I click on both endpoints. Now I can rotate around the line as you can see. Also, notice that the UCS adjusted its position to the rotation point here. Finally, to create a solid, I can set up the angle or I click on the place that I want. OK. Let's check out a few examples. If I tap the angle 0 degrees or 360 degrees, it creates a wheel shape. So the command revolve can be useful to create these kinds of objects, especially those ones used on mechanical drawing. It's also possible to change the direction of the rotation. We can click on Reverse on the command bar or type R. However, at the moment of selecting the rotation axis, if I click on the points in an inverse order, the rotation angle is automatically on the other side. Be careful with the axis of rotation. The rotation axis that we select needs to permit the object to rotate. For example, if we select this line as our axis, the object cannot rotate around there. Start angle. Let's suppose for, for the same object, we don't want to start extruding here, but on that line. I click on start angle, then I click on a point on this line, and finally revolve the object to the second line, for example. Slice. The command slice allows us to cut objects in two parts. It's like a knife. However, if you try to use the command for the first time, it's possible that you don't get the point immediately. But I'm going to explain the things clearly. The way slice works is we draw a line on the XY plane and it generates the cutting plane along the Z axis. I click on the icon. Select the object to slice, this one. Press Enter. Now I draw the line between these intersections. Then I have to select the side of the solid that I want to keep. If I click here, the part to the right of the cutting line disappears. So if instead I would click on the other side, that is what happens. Let's draw a line in a different direction, but this time I select both solids. I draw the line and click on this side. Keep both sides. Sometimes we just want to divide the object in two, without erasing any side. That's simple. Do the whole process identically. But this time, I don't click on the side. I select this option. Keep both sides. The two solids were divided into two others. 
Using slice in a standard orthographic view, I mean a 2D perspective, is way easier. I move to this viewport, which is on the top view. I activate slice, select both objects. Then, when I draw a line, I realize it's easier to understand the cutting plane. I'm going to make it diagonal. To use a cutting plane that is not on the direction of the z-axis on the word UCS, I need to rotate the UCS icon. Here, I just go to this viewport where I am at the right view, turn on Slice, select the objects and draw the cutting line here. I select this side and here it is. Oh, the solid above remained untouched. That was because I didn't cross it with the cutting line. One last thing. Just say that for the cutting line doesn't matter its length. Even if I draw it until here, it applies to all the objects. Solid edit. As well as p edit, this is a complex command that allows me to edit parts of a solid, such as edges, faces, or the body. In the ribbon, you can find the solid edit options in several icons. In this tutorial, I am going to explain to you some of them. Extracting edges. In a solid object, it's possible to extract the edges easily. Click on the icon, select the object, press enter, and the action is completed. If I click on this edge, the selection cycling window opens. As you see, I can select the 3D solid or a line. I am going to move the solid to the right. Look, the extracted edge is there. Imprint. If I draw objects on the face of a solid, for example these circles, I can use imprint to merge them with the solid. I go to this arrow and click on the icon. Then select the solid, press enter, select the circle to imprint. Now if I decide I want to erase the original circle, I click on yes. After, I can select the other circle and do the same. What happened is that the circles are now edges of the solid. And I can perform operations like press pull here. Extrude faces. This is another solid editing option. We can extrude a face of a solid. I am going to click on the icon, select the face on this object and press enter. Then I can either insert the extrusion height or define it by drawing a line. I click on a point on the face. I move up and insert 50. For the angle of taper for extrusion, I type 0. Here you have the result. Select two faces. We can select more than one face at the same time. With these two, I press Enter, then I can type the extrusion height 50. Press Enter again. Angle of taper. After selecting the height of extrusion, the prompt asks, select angle of taper. I am going to type 10 and you will see the result. All the edges rotated 10 degrees inside and it creates this kind of roof. Let's type 30 for the angle. Look. Of course, have in mind that I cannot intersect the faces here because the distance on this side is higher than in the section where the roof intersects. Taper faces. This tool allows me to change the face of a solid in a slope. 
I click on this arrow and then on Taper Faces. Select the face that I want. Then I have to specify an axis of tapering. I draw a line here and the first point is where the face rotates around. I'm going to rotate 30 degrees in this side. Now let's repeat this process. This time invert the order of selecting points. By typing a negative value makes the slope outside of the solid. In this way. Separate. With this tool we can separate a solid that has non-continuous sections. In this example we have two solids, but I have in mind that we can use union to merge them, even if they don't intersect physically. Now I have a unique 3D solid. So with the option separate, it's this icon, click there. Then I select the solid and it separates the non-continuous volumes. I can press escape here or click on exit. Then Exit again. Let's now talk about some commands on the section Modify. Rotation 3D. This tool allows us to rotate the solid around a specific axis. I am going to show you. Click on the command located in the Modify tab. Select this solid and the gizmo appears on its center. I can click on the axis that I want to rotate around, for example the Y axis, this one. If I rotate the pointer to this side, I am at the start position, it says here 0 degrees. Then, as you can see, I rotate around the center of the solid. By clicking at this moment, I place the solid at this current position, or I can specify a rotation angle. I type for example 90 degrees. To rotate around the x-axis, choose the red circle. This time the start position is here. Then I move the pointer and you can see how the rotation looks like now. Specify a base point. Instead of choosing a rotation axis on the gizmo, I can specify a new position for the rotation point. As it's written in the prompt, I can type the coordinates for the base point, or choose it with the mouse. I click on this endpoint and the gizmo moved there. Then I need to specify the angle for the start point. I click across the track line to start the rotation here. Now we have the solid on this strange position. Let's rotate it to where it was before. Activate 3D Rotate again, select the solid, specify the base point on the corner again, the rotation axis is the green one. For the angle start point, click on this edge, it can be the other corner. Finally, find the track line for the X axis and click there. 3D Move to understand the command 3D move, let's remember first how the command move, the normal move, works in a 3D perspective. After specifying the base point, we can move the object around the XY plane. When we click on 3D move, we select the object and then the gizmo appears there. Basically. Here we select the plane where we want the solid to move around. If I click on this one, it's the XZ plane, the Y coordinate doesn't change. Look at the left viewport here to understand how this wedge moves. 3D mirror. To use the command 3D mirror, instead of drawing a mirror line, we need a mirror plane. Let's have this example that we want to draw a symmetric wedge there. Unlike normal mirror, we should draw here an auxiliary line. Hold this endpoint, 
move left along the x-axis, then type 30 to place the first point. The line, we will place it along the y-axis. Then we activate 3D Mirror. Select the object, press Enter. Then we need three points to define the plane. Click on two points of the line and the third point is going to be along the z-axis. Second example. I want to mirror the wedge there. That means our mirror plane will be when the z-coordinate is zero. Select the object. Press Enter. For the plane, click on three points on the XY plane, for example these two, and the third can be along this axis. So here you have the result. It's very simple. It's all on the third part of this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. Still, if you need online private lessons, send me an email to the address that is showing there. See you next time!